Good morning, unit carriers. I am your sales director, Sarah Erb, and I'm so excited to be addressing you today because we are kicking off January Jumpstart. We are a week into January, and so from now through the weekend, we're gonna have a couple of quick videos and some fun lessons and challenges to help jumpstart your business to really get you going for the new year A resolution is, I resolve to do this one thing every single day for the next 365 days. And sometimes that can be a little bit overwhelming. A goal is more of, this is what I'm working toward on a regular basis, this big picture. And there are a couple little things that are gonna help me get there that I'm gonna do to reach this. It's not overnight, I'm gonna accomplish this big thing, but I'm going to work toward a couple little things to get to this big thing. This little piece of paper, it's not it's something big and fancy, but it but just says uh, seminar goals for 2014, 2015, right? Can you see that? And it basically breaks down a couple things. The career level and team building that I want to accomplish, uh, seminar recognition that I would like to have. It talks about personal sales and what I would like to do on a weekly and a monthly basis. Then it breaks down what my star consultant sales would look like and then other goals that I might have as well. And it's very simple. Uh, I really just want to know that you are setting a goal and that you've got something on paper because it's so important to have it on paper. We'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But I just wanted to point out um, something that I thought was really cool. Most of the things on here I've accomplished. And what's funny is a lot of them are things that I was working toward accomplishing for like a year and a half. And it wasn't until this year that I actually wrote them down. How funny is that? I finally wrote it down and then I accomplished it. It's literally scotch tape stuck above a bookshelf in my desk or my office. And it just sits there. And I see it, you know, every time I walk by, every time I have a customer come in and buy product, they see it. And it just, it, it's just a constant reminder to me that, oh, right, I'm working towards something. Right, I'm working towards something. So there's two ways to do a goal. One is the really, really, really easy way. One is the really, really, really hard way. And what we want to shoot for is something right in the middle. So let's pretend that you want to be more healthy and you want to lose weight, okay? Um, the really, really easy thing would be, I would like to lose three pounds in this year. <laughs> or I would like to take, you know, the next 365 days and eventually by the end, lose three pounds. That's really easy. Anyone can find a way to lose three pounds in a year, right? That's not hard. Um, but then the really, really hard way is I want to lose 100 pounds within the next three months or something like ridiculous. So you see the difference? One is super, super easy and attainable and kind of like under the bar. And one is just like way out there, probably pushing yourself beyond what you need to. And so what we're looking for is something right in the middle. Is set yourself up for a goal that you know you can attain and then turn it up a notch. Not crazy, but just turn it up a notch, right? Just a little bit. For example, let's pretend one of your goals is to do 30 faces in one month. But in the past, you've only been able to do about 10 or 15. And so what you want to challenge yourself to do is you know you can do about 10 or 15. So maybe turning it up a notch is you want to just do 20. Maybe you want to commit to doing 20. It's not that it's impossible, but it's going to be a big change in pattern. And so what you want to do is not feel that you're failing, because if you set these huge goals up for you, I'm going to lose 100 pounds in one month, and then you don't attain it, you get defeated and you feel discouraged. And then you think, well, what's the point in setting a goal if I can't make it? So we want to have you do something that's attainable, but then turn it up a notch, okay? You've got to be able to have a way to track your goals and track what you're doing. Otherwise, it's out of sight, out of mind, and no one's going to hold you accountable to it. So you need to make sure you do a couple of things. Number one, write your goal down. Use a piece of paper like this. This was my board for December faces. It's super not fancy. It looks not filled in at all, and my goal was to do 50. I did 45, not bad, right? But it's because it was there and I was looking at them. I put a check mark next to the people that bought something and a star next to the people that I crew chatted. 
I'm working toward finishing my court of sharing. And so here are the names of people that I've added. Here is where I'm tracking my court of sales. So every time I place a $500 or more order wholesale, I just check it off and that way I know it's done and I can see the progression. We're building our unit to 50. And so every single time we add someone to unit carriers, I write their name down and make a little note. Nothing fancy at all, but it gets the job done and that's the point. When you verbalize a goal, it becomes real to you. As we were becoming a unit back over the summer, I told everyone and their mother that I was working to become a director. I was working to become a director. I was working to become a director. And there were many times where it didn't look like I was gonna become a director. And I feel that because I had motivation and I had tracking and I had my goals written and blown up all over my house and my office and my car, and then I told everyone, it kept me motivated. It was constantly on the forefront of my brain that I am becoming a director. Everything I do on a day-to-day -day basis is helping remind me that I am becoming a director. That was my goal. And then you want to make sure too that you have time set in your day, even if it's just a little bit every day that you're working toward this goal. If you are not making time for your goal, then what makes you think you're going to be able to accomplish your goal? Even if it's just a little bit, five minutes, an hour that you're working toward that goal at least once every single day. Oh my goodness, the weekly plan sheet. This is something that can be a love-hate relationship, <laughs> but the weekly plan sheet is something that helps you get yourself in place. It looks like this. And it really just sets you up on a week to week so that you see where your time is going and where you are not working enough towards your goals and where you maybe are working a little too much toward them and you're missing out on the rest of life. And so it's a great way to keep yourself in check Keep yourself balanced and hold yourself personally accountable. I want to read a little quote to you that I feel like kind of struck me in a really, really big way. If I'm not where I want to be, do my daily disciplines match my goals? And that's just another reminder that if you are working toward this big thing, but all of your daily disciplines are kind of over here somewhere, then of course you're not going to be where you want to be. If this is what you're trying to accomplish, you need to make sure that your daily disciplines are lining up with this, at least in some way. The last thing I want to share with you is an awesome little article that I found earlier today, and it was talking about why 3% of Harbor MBAs make 10 times as much as the other 97% combined. Harvard, when you think of people that achieve Harvard graduate, you think, oh, they're rolling in it and they're very successful and making tons of money. But the truth is only 3% are set apart to the point that they make over 10 times as much as the rest of the 97% combined. I, that is, I found this article so incredible. The average Harvard MBA graduate starts at $115,000 a year with a $20,000 signing bonus, okay, just the average Harvard graduate. Nonetheless, some graduates of Harbor MBA program end up much, much more successful than the others in the long run. So why do 3% of Harbor MBAs take 10 times as much as the other 97% combined? They have very specific written out goals. Here's what they found in their interviews. 84% of your average Harvard grads had no specific goals at all. 13% had goals, but they weren't committed to paper. 3% had clear written goals and plans to accomplish what they were working to accomplish. Uh, back in 1989, the interviews were conducted again and they found that 13% of a class who had goals were earning on average twice as much as everybody else. So just because they had goals, they were already earning twice as much as the people who didn't have goals. But even more staggering, the 3% still who had clear written goals were earning on average 10 times as much as all the other 97% put together. Um, one last thing that this author mentions is taking time to write down your goals because it can be something that takes thought and time and effort. The author says, I was discussing writing goals with a friend who didn't think it was worth the effort. 
In our back and forth discussion, I told him all of the above and his response was, I can't write down my goals. I have so many and I don't have enough time. And the author's response is just simply, if you don't have time to write down your goals, where are you going to find time to accomplish them? Isn't that powerful? If you don't have time to write down your goals, where in the world are you going to find time to accomplish them? So I want to encourage you to do a couple of things. Even though we are halfway through the year, I want you to fill this out and take the time to write down your goals. If you need to put a copy of this in your car, if you need to put it in your office, in your home, um, if you have another job, putting it in your cubicle or someplace where you work, and then find tracking, tracking methods that are very, very simple. They don't have to be fancy. They don't have to be pretty. Um, but just something that shows your progression as you are working toward your goal. If you're working for 30 faces, get a piece of paper with 30 lines on it and write down 30 every single face that you see and put product on in the month of January. If you're working toward adding five team members, then make sure that you write down every single career chat that you have and highlight them when you get that new um, team member. Fill out your goal sheet, take a picture of it and send it to me. Tell someone, make sure you've got tracking in place and plaster your goals everywhere so you see them on a daily basis. Those are your challenges. The last thing I wanna leave you with is that I am here for you. I am your business coach. I am here to help you get what you want out of this business. That is literally my job description. So please remember, you are never bugging me or bothering me by approaching me with questions or concerns or um, wanting to strategize about your goal. I'm so excited for the things that are coming in the month of January, and I'm even more excited for the things that are gonna be happening in the next couple of months. This is my cat, and she's getting in the way of our video. Everybody say hi, Pootie. Hi, Pootie.